These are five mobile videography mistakes that I commonly see, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix them so your videos will look clean. My name is Jason Vong, and I run a YouTube channel on hybrid shooting, and what you're seeing right now is a short cinematic piece I did in Paris on my mobile smartphone. As a matter of fact, let's go over my setup real quick. The phone gimbal, very synonymous with mobile videography nowadays, and surprisingly, most of the mistakes that I've seen comes from using this. Not that this is a bad product or anything, it's just how it's being used. This is the DJI OM5, and I heard great things about it, and it'll be my first time using it in New York City. In Paris, I used the new Zhuyun Crane M3, and that one was fantastic. For the phone, I'll be using the new Sony Xperia Pro i to demonstrate all of my examples. They have a dedicated videography pro app that allows me to control all of my settings. But don't worry, four out of five tips has to do more with techniques than controlling your settings, so you'll still get a lot out of this video. The only setting to be aware of is frame rate. I'll be shooting in 4K 60 frames per second for the most part, and some in 4K 120 frames per second. That's because the Xperia Pro I can actually go up to that high thanks to the one inch sensor and processor behind the 24 millimeter lens. Most phones can actually shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second, so make sure you're at least on that. If not, 1080p HD 60 frames or 120 frames per second works too. And for my timeline frame rate, I'll be editing in 24 frames per second. That way I can slow down my 60 frames per second shots by 40% and 120 frames per second shots by 20%. With that said, let's get started. Tip number one, don't make it look robotic. A common gimbal technique I often see is the long take where the gimbal operator follows a path or behind a person, and these are great shots if they're executed well, but the mistakes I often see is the turn. The moment the operator needs to make a turn, it starts to fall apart because the turns look robotic. It looks unnatural. It's like playing with old school 90s Doom where you're controlling the character with the arrow key and it just looks super unnatural. See how the shot here always briefly pauses while I'm turning? We don't want that. So, how do we fix it? It all comes down to doing practice runs right before the actual take. Knowing where you'll be making turns or when the character makes a turn allows for anticipation. But I'm gonna be honest with you, this thing is a robot and sometimes having those robotic movement cannot be helped. So the next best thing that you can do is to have at least three varying shots. You can do a wide, medium, and close up of the same action or get the same action in three different angles. And in my opinion, this is better than the long takes because now you have different shots you can cut to to make a visual look a lot more engaging to watch. Plus, having different shots allow you to cover up your mistakes. Number two, don't leave in the linger. What I'm talking about is the little pauses at the beginning and at the end of a gimbal movement in your final video. This is more so on the edit rather than shooting on the spot because I often see clips where you can tell the operator haven't quite started their movement yet, they're lingering in the scene, and then the motion happens. You want to cut at the exact millisecond when the gimbal movement is happening and the millisecond before it stops. If you leave in the brief pauses at the beginning and the end, it just looks a little amateurish. Timing those cuts to remove the linger will make your videos look more clean. Number three, exaggerate the foreground. So whatever is in front of the camera right here, this is the foreground, I'm the middle ground, and that's the background. So I'm guilty of this too, because sometimes I like to do these push in gimbal shots of a building or a landmark thinking, oh yeah, I'm getting a real good shot here. But in reality, <laughs> it's a little boring because it looks like a tripod static shot where I just added a little bit of digital zoom in there. Just doesn't look that great. It's not fast enough to look like I'm actually moving, so in order to exaggerate that, we need foreground elements. And the closer the foreground elements are, the better the shot will look. So, for example, I was at the Louvre in Paris and I was getting this push in shot of the glass pyramid. And I thought, you know what? This could look a little more interesting. So then I turned around and saw these two lampposts right here. And all I did was backed up even more, framed up my shots with two posts now, and just pushed in. Oh yeah, you felt that difference, right? It's night and day. It's so basic, but yet so powerful at the same time. You see, the trick is you want these foreground elements here to be able to exit out of frame really quickly. So even if you're not moving that fast, the change is still very obvious. 
Tip number four, don't zoom. Always use native lenses. The native lenses are the ones here on the back of your phone. Zooming is a surefire way to lower the quality of your videos. I mean, you can zoom a little bit, but it's best to avoid it if you can. If you need a closer perspective of something, use the longest lens you have. For me, it's gonna be the 50 millimeter. Or just simply walking closer to your subject will always make for a better shot. And lastly, tip number five, control your focus. The autofocusing on smartphone cameras have gotten a lot better nowadays, but for the more trickier shots, you still need to set your focus. For example, so here's my shot of the Eiffel Tower with the locks in the foreground. Notice how the Eiffel Tower in the back stays in focus the entire time. Now, with most cameras, they will focus onto the lock, then focus to the tower, then focus back to the lock, and then they focus back to the tower. And that's because it's not too quite sure what needs to stay in focus. And if you leave that in your final video, that focus change can be very distracting. Go ahead and raise your hand right now if something similar like that happened to you. So on the Xperia Pro I through the Videography Pro app, I can stop the autofocus and set my focus manually. So all I did was just dial it to the tower. On other smartphones, usually pressing and holding down for a few seconds will lock down the focus. But if you find that your native camera app doesn't allow you to change your focus, consider getting the Filmic Pro app. It's available on both Android and iOS devices. It's just $15 and no, they are not the sponsor of this video, but it is one of the top mobile videography app and it's so worth it because it allows you to control all of your settings, including your focus. I used to use that, but because I have the Xperia Pro I now, the Videography Pro app allows me to do everything that I needed to do. By the way, this is a real cool phone. You should check out my review when you have the time. Hopefully this has helped you guys out and if you guys want more mobile videography pro tips from me, let me know in the comments down below. And hey, don't forget to leave this video a like. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Pew, pew, peace.